Hi friends, welcome back or welcome for the first time. I'm so glad you're here. I'm really excited to learn more about coral reefs with you. Before we get started, make sure you have your paper um, and your pen or pencil that you're gonna be using. You'll need it today because we're gonna write a journal entry. And then also make sure that you have your turn and talk partner. Remember, it can be anyone. It can be a family member or a furry friend or a scaly friend. Um, it could be someone in your imagination that you would love to have a conversation with a book about. I always like to have my conversations with my good friend, Russell Wilson. I wanna know what he knows and what he wants to know about coral reefs. You can talk to him too, he's a really good partner. So last time we learned about how we can use wondering to help think about what we're reading and to make sure that we understand what we're reading and we're gonna continue to do that today. Great readers wonder. Adults, adult readers, they wonder. We wonder, we get curious, and then we go out and we find the answers to what we're wondering about, and that's what makes us strong readers. Last time we started the book Coral Reefs by Seymour Simon. We're gonna to continue to read a different part of this book today. I want you, before we get started, to think about what have you learned about coral reefs so far? Yesterday, we learned about where you find coral reefs. We learned about what they're made of and how they form. Um, we got to look at some really cool coral reefs, different types of coral. We learned about my favorite one that looks like a brain. We um, also learned about some of the softer ones. And in these pictures, I saw some fish floating around and I got to wondering about the fish that live in the coral reef and so that's what I wanna learn about today. I wanna to learn more about the fish in the coral reef. Today I'm gonna to read a section of this book that's all about the many animals that live in coral reefs. What do you think you know about animals in coral reefs? Turn to your partner. Based on what you think you know, what do you wonder about the animals that live in the coral reef? Turn to your partner. So I'm wondering, I'm thinking about the fish that live in the coral reef. I wonder how they all live in harmony together under there. I wonder how they protect themselves from predators. I wonder what predators live down there. Um, I mean, are there sharks that live down there? How do you protect yourself from a shark if you're just a little fish? I have a lot of wonders about this, so I'm gonna add them to my poster.
So today I'm going to continue to wonder about the animals of the coral reef as I read. I'd like you to keep your wonders in your mind too and listen to see if you find any answers to the questions I'm asking or you're asking or your partners are asking. I'm going to stop several times so that you can think about what we've learned and about what you're wondering and share your thinking with your partner. A coral reef is like a city with many different kinds of citizens. Fishes, crabs, clams, anemones, tube worms, algae, seaweed, and more. Whew, that's a lot. The reef provides shelters for thousands of fish species, such as reef sharks, eels, parrotfish, angelfish, groupers, butterflyfish, piperfish, puffers, and rays. The fish have adaptations that help them find food or escape from becoming food. An adaptation, their characteristics that help animals survive in their habitat. The fish have adaptations that help them find food or escape from becoming food. Butterfly fish are brightly colored and boldly patterned reef fishes. The four-eyed butterfly fish has a large false eye spot on the base of its tail, similar to the eye spots on some butterfly wings. This may trick predators into attacking the wrong end, giving the butterfly fish a chance to escape. Clownfish may be easy to spot, but by swimming among the stinging tentacles of a giant anemone, they can avoid becoming a meal for larger fish. Here's that big eye over here. And there's, I recognize that guy, that little orange guy at the bottom. And over here is the eye that looks like an eye on the wrong side of the fish so he doesn't get chomped up. That's smart. Porcupine fish are recognized by the sharp spikes that cover their heads and bodies. Larger fish usually won't attack them, but just in case they do, a porcupine fish quickly puffs up with seawater into a spiky ball at least double its original size. A giant moray eel grows to more than six feet long. It hides within cracks and openings in a reef, perfectly blending in with the surrounding coral. Colorful parrotfish use their chisel-like teeth to scrape coral for algae. A chisel is a tool with a sharp edge that's used to chip away at something. Colorful parrotfish use their chisel-like teeth to scrape coral for algae. While eating, the parrotfish grinds the coral into the fine white sand found on tropical beaches. I think that parrotfish is so pretty. That one down at the bottom, although its teeth are a little bit, those chisel-like teeth are a little bit crazy. What have you learned about the animals or the fish that live in the reef so far? What I wonder statements have been explained in the reading? Turn to your partner. What else are you wondering? Turn to your partner. So I was wondering about the fish that live in reefs. Yesterday I asked that question, or last time we were together I read that question, and I learned that there are a ton of different fish that live down there, and I learned specifically about a few of them. And I think the porcupine fish is really cool. I especially like the way it blows itself up like a balloon to scare off predators. I thought that was really cool, and that also answered another one of my wonders about predators, about the different ways that animals or that fish were able to protect themselves when they're living so close to so many other animals. Um, I heard about that porcupine fish, but we also learned about how other animals protect themselves, how the moray eel hides um, within the reef, 
how um, the butterfly fish has the big fake eye and how clownfish uh, swim close to stinging anemones, which I thought was pretty cool too. And then I got to wondering, they were talking all about fish in this section. What else lives down there? I'm wondering what other animals live in coral reefs. So I'm gonna jot that down on my poster. Remember, while I'm reading, you can be thinking about our wonders, the things that we're wondering, and listening to see if there's any information in the book that helps us answer those questions. A coral reef is also home to animals such as seabirds, porpoises, dolphins, manatees, sea turtles, sea snakes, and sharks. But invertebrates, animals without backbones, such as sponges, clams, and crabs, are the most common reef animals. Sponges look like plants, but they're really animals. They attach themselves to hard pieces of coral skeleton and feed by drawing water into their bodies and filtering out plankton. Filtering means separating. They draw water into their bodies and filter out plankton. Sea stars and sea urchins have spiny skins. A giant adult sunflower sea star can be three feet across and have 16 to 24 arms. Each arm is studded with hundreds of tiny, powerful tube feet. Sea stars eat by turning their stomachs inside out through their mouths and surrounding and digesting the soft body of a clam, an urchin, a snail, or another sea star. Mm. Clams, oysters, and snails are soft-bodied mollusks that usually have protective shells. Whoa. What have you learned so far about animals that live in the coral reefs? What I wonder statements have been explained in the reading so far? Turn to your partner. What else are you wondering? Turn to your partner. I thought this part was fascinating. Um, we learned about all types of animals that live in the reefs, about the sea sponges and the sea stars and the sea urchins. I thought that sea stars all had five arms, but we learned that the adult sunflower sea star could have up to 24 arms, which is pretty crazy. I'll show you a picture. Look at that. That's a lot of arms. We also learned that they eat by turning their stomachs inside out through their mouths and surrounding and di digesting the soft body of a clam, an urchin or a snail or a sea star. I had no idea. That's wild. Now I'm kind of wondering how other animals down there eat. I'm also wondering about other animals. I didn't hear anything about octopus. I wonder if octopus live in the reef because they're one of my favorite things to see when I take my daughters to the aquarium. We love to look for the octopus. So I'm wondering if they live down in the reef. I'm gonna add that to my chart.
All right, keep wondering. Keep these wonders in your mind. Clams, oysters, and snails are soft-bodied mollusks that usually have protected sh protective shells. Clams and oysters often lie buried in the sand or attach themselves to the hard coral. They eat by opening their shells and filtering plankton from the water. A clam can be as small as a thumbnail or, like the giant clam of Australia's Great Barrier Reef, it can grow more than four feet across and weigh over 500 pounds. Small mollusks, or some mollusks, such as the octopus, squid, and cuttlefish, don't have shells. The tiny poisonous blue-ringed octopus lives in the deeper parts of Australian coral reefs. Crabs, lobsters, and shrimp have hard, jointed outside skeletons. They hide in the cracks of the coral and crawl around the reef looking for food. A coral reef at night is a living wall of tiny tentacled mouths, polyps, feeding on plankton. Nighttime provides cover for many small reef animals from predators. It is also when the eggs of countless sea creatures hatch. Most plankton animals go on a daily elevator journey, rising to surface waters as night falls and descending to the safety of deeper, darker waters at daybreak. Nighttime reef fish look very different from daytime fish. They have dark colors and large eyes that reflect light. Some reef fish that are colorful during the day even change to darker colors at night. What have you learned so far about the animals that live in coral reefs? What I wonder statements have been explained in the reading so far? Turn to your partner. What else do you wonder? Turn to your partner. So I was wondering how different animals eat after I learned about the one that turns inside out. I was wondering how different animals eat. I was really wondering about how clams eat because they can't move, they just sit there. So I was really interested when I read the part about how they just open their big mouth and they, the water comes in and they filter out their snacks, their algae snacks. I thought that was really cool and that answered one of my questions. I got to wondering though, I'm looking at all these beautiful animals and all of this beautiful coral. I'm wondering how humans are affecting the way that coral lives and the way that it grows. That's kind of a question uh, we read a couple weeks ago in my class. We read a book about global warming and we learned that it's having a big effect on a lot of things. So I'm wondering if global warming is affecting coral reefs and if humans are affecting coral reefs but we'll have to wait until next time to read and find out about that. So today for your IDR time, I'd like you to pick up a, an expository nonfiction book again. And before you start reading, I'd like you to think about what you wonder about the topic of the text. Then as you read, I want you to notice whether the text is answering those wonders, those questions, and I want you to notice how that helps you understand what you're reading. That's exactly what we did together today, and I want you to do that in your own reading, your independent reading that you did do today. I'm continuing to read um, the Mount Everest book. It's been really interesting. So that's the book I'm going to read today. And then I'm going to write a journal entry about this book, and you're going to do that too. So today, after you read for about 30 minutes, you'll write a journal entry about it. And the journal entry should include the title and the author's name, what the text is about, just a little blurb about what the whole book is about. And then you're going to write one of the things that you wondered about the text. Then you'll write what you learned about the text. It might be the answer to your wonder, 
But you might not have found the answer to your wonder, so then you can just write something else that you wonder about that. So today, um, I am continuing to read The Top of the World, Climbing Mount Everest. And I told you last time that I was really interested in who the first people were that um, climbed Mount Everest. And so I read a, a section about that today, and then I wrote my journal entry about that. My journal entry is on the screen, and it says, the book I read is The Top of the World, Climbing Mount Everest by Steve Jenkins. The text is about what you need to know and what you need to have to climb Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. I wondered who the first person to reach the summit of Mount Everest was. I learned that it was actually two people. I learned that Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay were the first people to successfully reach the summit on May 29th, 1953. So today, when after you've read and after you've been wondering and looking for answers in your piece, I'd like you to write a journal entry like that one. Okay, my friends, it is IDR time. Make sure that you're reading expository nonfiction. Make sure that you're reading for at least 30 minutes today. You could be reading in a book if you have any. If you have already read up all your expository nonfiction, you breezed through them already, don't forget that we have online resources for you. So you could be reading um, expository nonfiction on Pebble Go or any of the other available um, websites that we have. Thank you for reading with me today. I'll see you next time for some more wondering. Happy reading. Mm -hmm.